Thanks for checking out the channel. In this video, we are going to go over what I believe to be the main differences between S Cinetone on Sony cameras like the Sony A7S III, the FX3, the FX6, and FX9 versus working in S Log3, S Gamma3 Cine. There have been a lot of chatter on my channel specifically on some of the videos that I put out before where people essentially tell me that you're able to grade S Cinetone and my whole take on it is a Cinetone is really made for straight out of camera delivery or like live event coverage. I'm going to try and show you that what it is that I believe those differences are. And of course, I'm curious to hear what it is that you guys think. If you have a Cinetone footage that you were able to grade and it looks terrific, you know, it doesn't have artifacts, it doesn't have blocking, you didn't clip highlights or you didn't crush shadows or dark areas, please be sure to link it in the comments of this video so that we can all see what it is that you were able to accomplish when shooting in S Cinetone, because I think that is the value behind the community that we're building here on this channel. So let's jump straight on in. And now here I'm looking at a clip. And in fact, let me just bring in, let's see, media edit. I'm going to bring in, I need to get rid of these scopes. I'm going to bring in a an S Cinetone clip. So the same shot was, you know, basically taken in both S Cinetone as well as S Log3, S Gamma3 Cine. So here's a vector scope and here's a waveform. This is S Log3, S Gamma3 Cine. You can see here I have so much headroom up into the highlights and so much room or significant room into the darker or shadow side of my image. Of course, my saturation is also really minimal because this is a log image. It's a flat image. As Cinetone, in contrast to what we just saw, you can see the scopes here very quickly change and they look very different, right? In S Cinetone, we can already see that the way that it was captured in camera, some information got clipped in the highlights. Nothing was crushed in the dark areas, which is actually a really good thing, given that we have some blacks, you know, all throughout the frame here. I am able to recover some of this, which helps the look. So I'll bring this down. And now I'm no longer clipping that highlight information of what I captured. And this is what I end up with. This is not a bad looking image. It's, um, it looks pretty good straight out of camera. If I was using a Cinetone on a project, I would be happy with this image straight out of camera. If I'm doing a live broadcast, this to me works. It works really well and, and I don't need to really tweak it. But if I want to make this image my own, then what I really need to do is I need to have the ability to manipulate color in a way that helps me tell my story. For that example, I'm going to use the S Log 3 S Gamma 3 Cine clip that we see here that's flat. Now I have a series of LUTs that we've created for um, the Sony A7S III and the FX3, which are the two cameras, two Sony cameras that we actually have in inventory today at our studio. And the reason why we create the LUTs is so that we can speed up post-production workflow. And some of these LUTs are made specifically for the types of clients that we already have. I'm going to add one of these LUTs so here we go, and I'm going to go with broadcast because we do a significant amount of broadcast work. This is our broadcast look. It's a very well exposed image. It is balanced. It doesn't have any color hues. There clearly isn't any noise or any problems. The Sony cameras do a really good job with noise. And obviously we're in a studio, so we were able to make sure that we didn't clip any highlights or crush any dark areas of the image. That actually matters. And all I did was drop in that single LUT correction. And just so you can see here, I don't have any other corrections at all on this image other than that simple LUT that we just dropped. Now, what makes this LUT and the rest of our LUTs actually work? And actually, before I go in there, I'm just going to do a side by side. So this is our corrected image the way that we would want to deliver it for broadcast. And this is S Cinetone. There's nothing wrong with S Cinetone, but to me, S Cinetone doesn't look as nice for a broadcast type of image as this one. And that's really what I've been saying based on the type of work and the types of projects and the types of clients that I work with. If S Cinetone is right for you and you're shooting weddings, 
you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And if Escenitone is right for you and you're doing, you know, I don't know, commercial work or social media work or quick turnaround work or depositions for attorneys or whatever it is that you're doing, I think that's great. For me, I'd like to be able to take control of my image. And if I'm able to expose correctly, then I can end up with what I believe are better results over a baked in color profile or color, color look that I get out of a Cinetone. And again, I don't see there's anything wrong with that. If I'm doing a live event or live coverage, this works great. It works great. I have zero issues with it. And I think it deserves the praise that it gets online for what it's able to accomplish straight out of camera. So just to get that crystal clear message out there, I think this is fine. I think it works. For what I do, I prefer a look like this because it's more commercial. And I spend more time on commercial work than I do on indie productions. What makes this LUT work with a single click adjustment are actually two things. The expectation is that one, when I captured, I exposed correctly. In other words, I didn't crush any dark areas and I didn't blow out any highlights. So as long as my waveform is sitting in a nice neutral type of position, I'm able to then drop in this LUT and have the waveform expand and give me an image that I'm happy with. Can I manipulate this image further after I drop in the LUT? And the answer is yes. But there's one other key that makes this actually work. And the other key is that when I captured, this LUT is expecting that I nailed my white balance. And if you didn't nail your white balance, then the way that I would use these LUTs, I'm just gonna reset this node, is I would actually add a second node, and then I would apply my LUT to that second node. So I'll go again with broadcast for this example. And then I'd go back into my first node, and here we see that I'm right at that 100 IRE mark on the highlights. If I wanted to bring that down just a tad, I could. And there I'm no longer clipping. And I also have some information here that's being crushed, which is this area here by her shoulder, um, leading into her arm. So if I wanted to lift that, I could. So now I made my exposure adjustment. So I'll make very small adjustments. And there we go. I just lifted the areas that got crushed. I'm going to bring this back down. So now nothing is clipping and I still have the image. So I made the exposure adjustments in a node before I dropped in my LUT to correct for what this LUT was actually doing. And it would do the same thing if I messed up my white balance. As long as I have a way of referencing what white is, then I can do it in a node before that and maybe use Resolve's little and then or white balance selection tool and then select either an area in my gray card or right in my white patch to decide what white is to help this um, correction work properly. I like this level of contrast better than the raised um, or lower contrast look that happened when I made the exposure adjustment. So I would leave it this way. But this actually, and would be true of any of the other LUTs in the pack. So for example, if I want to go with this fantasy LUT, same thing, except here we see that the dark areas are raised on purpose. So the saturation really is what's happening here is that the saturation and the contrast in this area is purposely restricted or reduced in this specific LUT. And we're also then not clipping any of the highlight information. But I can go down the list and show the rest of these, you know, LUTs. So for example, here's our feature LUT has a different color hue. You know, it, it leans in a different direction um, to give it more of that feature look. But we're also then again not clipping any highlights or crushing any dark areas. And let me just, for the sake of continuing here, horror, this is actually... We use this LUT, believe it or not, in a lot of fun projects. The, this is not always flattering for women, but this is actually, I like this look. <laughs> I don't know why, but I like this look. And what we try to do with our LUTs is to try to always stay true to what white is so that it shows up as white, to try to stay true with, to what the skin tones are so that they're always in the right range. They don't look like somebody's sick or something. 
and we try to not get the dark areas of the image into that milky state because that milky state is not something that I'm a fan of. It doesn't really work for the types of projects that we do. Going back to the subject of the video, right, which S Cinetone versus S Log 3, really, these are a lot of very different and what I would call unique looks that I'm getting out of S Log 3, S Gamma 3 Cine, that I cannot get out of S Cinetone without breaking the codec or ruining my image in some way. I can, if I try to push my grade in any of these directions or with some of these are pretty extreme, right? Like that's kind of extreme. Let me see if I can show another here. So I'll do, punch it is not going to be as, as extreme, but this clearly it's a, a very extreme look. If I try to do this type of look after I shot with a Cinetone, I'm going to introduce artifacts everywhere that there's a gradient. So like in her forehead, underneath her hair, I'm going to have artifacts. In her pupils, on her eyes, I'm going to have artifacts. On the, on the darker areas and maybe even in her shirt, I'm going to end up with some weird blockiness and artifacts that just kind of ruin the image. Whereas if I play this, we're not seeing any artifacts. I'm not seeing any artifacts on my Pro XDR display. I'm not seeing any noise. I'm not seeing any cross color pollution. So this is what I'm mainly saying that I can't get out of a Cinetone. And, and again, I, I realize that some people out there maybe are saying that they're doing some adjustments and they're calling it color grading um, to a Cinetone. But anytime that you are adjusting exposure, white balance, or contrast, those are not color grading changes to your footage. That's color correction. And I think that it's really important that we understand and take note of that. So that is going to wrap it up for me. Again, a Cinetone, an actual grade. Here, her skin looks like it's a little flat and doesn't have contrast it looks good but it is it, it's a it's a different look i guess is the best way for me to say it and here i feel like her skin looks a lot more alive her eyes pop out she pops out from the frame and doesn't blend into my entire scene that's really all i wanted to say and all i wanted to show and hopefully this was useful to somebody and i will catch you guys in the comments i'll do the, the best that i can to respond to comments and if you don't agree with me that's actually okay we all don't have to agree but i again invite you and anyone else who has clips that they want to show on what it is that they're able to accomplish with s cinetone to create unique stylized looks that allow you to manipulate s cinetone into something else please link them in the comments please share them with the community because when you do that we all benefit because we all get to learn from each other thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one